What do you think? Whoa. Very nice. It's very cool, Bateman, but that's nothing. What do you think? Nice. But wait. You ain't seen nothing yet. White. Impressive. Very nice. Mm. Let's see Paul Allen's. Oh my god. Today, no painting. Instead, we take a look at a few items that actually helped me while painting minis. Welcome, my name is Hubert and on this channel I share with you my journey on becoming a better painter after many years without touching a brush. The last time I went into a Warhammer store, it went something like this. Hi there, is there a project you're working on? I know more than you. All right. Some of the items we're going to cover in this video are not what you typically find in your Warhammer stores. And some of the tools we're going to see are more about the idea than the object itself. Now, I know I'm just a... Stupid little prick named Rick who thought he knew shit but didn't know shit. It's about you. But after getting back into the hobby with now the, the whole internet to feed me information, I felt I could just get better at painting with the help of a few items. There is a lot of information out there. I'm not pretending to have a better opinion than anyone else. These items are just tools I didn't have when I was a kid discovering the hobby for the first time. And that I'm really happy to have now. If this video helps at least one random person on the internet, it's worth it. So, let's get to it. Behold, my stuff. Ooh. I upgraded from a standard desk lamp to the Nitfi, uh, Nitfi, Neatfi, Neatfi, XL2500 lumens. This lamp is fantastic for painting miniatures because it's super bright. Oh, thank God. Which helps you see all the tiny details clearly. You can adjust the color temperature to get the perfect light for accurate colors. And its large head covers a wide area, giving you uniform lighting without shadows. It's very flexible, so you can position it exactly where you need it, and it doesn't get too hot. Plus, it's sturdy and stays in place. I didn't think getting proper light would help this much until I got this one. Of course, there are other models and the price range is wide. This one is about 160 euros on Amazon and is considered the best bang for your buck compared to more expensive ones. This is by far the most helpful one for me. Two reasons. Helps with uh, shaky hands. and told me how to sub-assembly. It would be impossible or suicidal to sub-assembly without these. I generally use crafting putty to stick my minis on top, or small wires to hold bits while working on a sub-assembly project. The main goal for me is to help getting a steady posture and avoiding touching the minis with my nasty fingers. There are many brands selling different kinds of folders, but the price tag is on average about 15 euros. I just prefer building my own 
gives me more flexibility. I'll try different methods in the future, with magnets for example. Um, this is a popular one, but I had to mention it. This is a case of... Um, this is more about the idea behind it than about the object himself. It's all about thinning your paints. The wet palette just helps the process and prevents the paint from drying too quickly. When I got back into painting, learning about this tool also taught me about not taking the paint directly from the pot anymore. It's also a great tool to encourage new painters like myself to mix paints together and just play around colors. I recently got the small red grass game Everlasting Wet Palette for 25 euros and it's perfect for me. I don't have too much space and it fits perfectly. If you are broke like me, you can create one yourself with just a box, some paper towel and some cooking parchment paper. Now, this is an easy one. Some people hate it, some people love it. I just love using this tool. It changed my way of seeing miniature painting and I've only scratched the surface of all the things I can do with it. I won't go into details. You can get a cheap one for priming or just doing base coats and varnishing. Perfect tool for this or you can go further and learn how to take advantage of it. But uh, it's not cheap. You have to get the airbrush, the compressor, cable, cables, and all the tools to use it, clean it, and maintain it. Plus, you have to learn how to use it. An airbrush can save you a lot of time and help you in your painting style, but it's not monetary. I got the Iwata CN Neo for about 92 euros. It's relatively cheap compared to some other ones. And so far, it works well for me. Simple yet effective. Effective. Almost 20 years ago, I used the old PVA and sand trick to build my bases. Today, I much prefer using texture that I can apply with a brush. Helps me get much cleaner bases than what I was used to. I also sometimes use some cork to add some scenery. Lately, I've been using Vallejo's Dark Earth texture and it's fantastic. It goes around 15 euros a pot and will last a long, long time. And that's it. Now, remember, this video is not about the best tools, but more about the ones that I think help me the most at this moment. You're welcome to share your favorite tools in the comments. And I know uh, the hobby is not just about um, tools, buying stuff, etc. Et um, it's about painting and the art, and playing, of course, but um, you need tools, so if you have tips or maybe a, a rare opinion, share. I chose today's topic because I don't know yet who watches my videos. I want to address painters of all levels. And don't forget, new people are discovering this hobby every day. So I just wanted to make a small contribution to what can help them. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next week, and until next time, happy painting!